Hey, hello, my friends. Hope everybody is well today. In this uh, video series of videos, I'm going to show you how you will be able to use a Zebra LP2844 direct thermal printer on your Chromebook. This has been a battle fight of mine for a long time. Uh, I'm a 98% Chromebook user. Real quick, Chromebooks are not PCs, are not Macs. They are Chromebooks working on the, or using the uh, Chrome uh, operating system. Basically, it's a big web browser, basically, but they're getting better and better every day. I, I truly believe they're really nipping at the heels at the uh, PCs and Macs with all the apps and all the stuff you can do with them. But one of the main issues with resellers that use Chromebooks is printing on these darn things. And it's taken me a little while figuring out the videos you're going to see are going to be basically from start to finish, the printer I bought, uh, how to initialize it, uh, how to get the labels set up, um, how to get it hooked up to your Chromebook, and et cetera. And then you're going to see breaks in the videos of things I had problems with and things I figured out. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope this really helps you out. Please leave any comments down below and please subscribe to my channel. I appreciate every single one of you guys and gals. I know this ain't much to many YouTubers, 368. Love to hit that 1000 mark, but you guys mean a lot to me. Thanks a lot for hanging in there and enjoy this video. And like I said, it's going to be a little chopped up with different bits and pieces, but it'll get you all through it. Just a uh, Go through it, and it shouldn't be a big problem hooking up a Zebra LP2844 uh, direct thermal printer onto your Chromebook. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Enjoy. Okay, here is the printer I just ordered off of eBay, the Zebra LP2844. $126. It's a refurbished printer. Uh, it came with the printer, obviously. This is right out of the box. A cord, a USB cord. A roll of labels, which was really cool, because that means I can get started right away. And then here is your power supply and a wire. So that's it. That's what I got in the box today. Okay, I just open it up to check it out. Looks brand spanking new to me. Great job on reconditioning. Great idea on how to get business. I uh, ordered off a uh, Hippo Deals is their store name on eBay. But wow, I'm quite impressed on how the inside looks. Can't wait to get this going on my Chromebook. All right, let's load some labels up into this printer here. Uh, one thing you want to check first to make sure you have direct thermal labels. And one way to do this is to take like a pen or something, just the end of a pen and strike it to see if it makes that mark like that. That's the kind of label you want. Then you're going to open your lid and you're going to pull these things back. These are your adjusters for your roll. Pretty simple. Okay. And um, what you want to do is you don't want to use this first label, first or second label, because it's a little dirty, they said. It might put some dirt on the printhead. You want to adjust these adjusters. Mine have to go almost all the way out and then fumble around this a little bit. Oops. There you go. And then you just shut the lid. And that is it. I don't have it powered on yet or anything, but that's pretty simple on loading labels. Uh, I'm really excited about this printer. I'm hoping it's what's going to work for me with my Chromebook. Okay. All right. So each time you put a different size label in the printer, you need to calibrate it. So let's calibrate this printer. It's pretty simple. The power button is off. Leave the power button off. Press this button. Keep it pressed. Turn the power on. It'll blink red and it should start calibrating the printer the label it's going to go do, do, take about 20 to 30 seconds and we're going to watch this whole process 
You can see I'm using the labels I told you not to use the first two. See it's calibrating the distance of the label on everything. Now it's going to print out an information sheet at the end. And that is it. All calibrated. That is it. It's going to print out a simple information whatever that stuff says on it and that is it it's all calibrated ready to go now we'll go to the next step and get this hooked up to the uh, chromebook okay so we've got the printer all calibrated with the label and everything uh, one thing i forgot to say after you calibrate it press that button on the top again to feed one label through to make sure that it is calibrated mine was calibrated i pressed that button after i stop the video hey before i forget please subscribe to my channel uh love every single one of you i know it's not many to many youtubers 698 love everyone you're trying to hit that magical 1000 mark please subscribe to my channel i appreciate it and please like the video if this helps you out Okay, first we're going to download the file, the PPD file, Postscript Printer Description File, they call it. Um, this is like one of the few uh, thermal printers that has the file. I was hoping that the Dymo, the printer I had, has one, but they do not. So I ended up buying this printer for $126, like I said earlier. You're going to go over to this website. I'm going to have the uh, the link in the description below for you. Uh, fulfilledmerchant.com, Zebra LP2844. It's a guy I know, college picker. Great YouTube channel, but please subscribe to mine too. <laughs> um, known him for years. You're going to scroll down through all this stuff here. He's still creating the site, but he's got the link right here for the file. You're going to click this right here, and it's going to download. You're going to see it's going to have a one next to mine because I've already got one there. You're going to say download. And like I said, you're going to see that one there right there. Just ignore that. Or just that's just another one I should have deleted the one I had, but I did not. So you can close this printer. That screen, I'm sorry. We're going to plug our printer into our Chromebook USB port. I don't have a USB port on my uh, Chromebook, but I do have uh, one of these bus things that has all the USB ports from my Type C connector. So I'm going to plug it in. Very simple to hook this printer up. You're going to get this little notice saying, hey, we found a printer. You're going to click here. You're going to say setup. You're going to say browse file for your PPD file, your postscript printer description file. Should be in your downloads folder. I have two of them. This is the first one I downloaded earlier to test everything out to make sure it worked, which it does. I'm totally stoked about this. Uh, I'm going to click this. Like I said, the link will be in the description to get this file. You're going to open it up. You're going to add the printer. Printer is added. Now, what I also did, you're going to need like a dummy label to play around with, but I went out to eBay and just give me a second here. I looked at my uh, solds. Went out to uh, actions here. I'm going to reprint a UPS label. For some reason, I can't reprint a USPS label, but we'll do a UPS label. Uh, before, I had to uh, use a large laser printer to print these out and then fold the paper up, and it was, uh, it was not good. And I had to use an old laptop that had Windows 10 on it. And I really don't use Windows 10 anymore. I'm all Chromebook anymore which works for me. It's not for everyone, Chromebooks. Uh, we're going to reprint the label. And it's already defaulted to it, but I would normally find the printer. And I'm going to shrink this down. You've seen enough of my ugly mug. 
Okay, I found a slight problem with printing the label this morning. Seemed to work fine last night when I was playing around with it. And then this morning, when I tried to print a label, it came out like this. Like, what the heck? And I went back and played around with the DPI. And it seems like uh, Chrome OS did some kind of update or something. Well, it kind of works at first, and then it doesn't. So you have to do this DPI to get it to work on the printer now. It's just a sample label. You don't want to change. You don't want to change that. Whatever that is set to, just leave that alone. You want to change this to 203. It was set at 600. That was the default. But you want to change it to 203, and then your label will print out like this, like a normal label. So there you go. I just wanted to pass that on to you. I struggled with that for a while this morning. Like I was getting really annoyed, like now it's not working, but I figured it out. Um, honestly, I got the information off a of college picker's uh, video uh, in the comments there. He, um, he mentioned something about 203 and I looked into it and he was right. So that's what you got to do. And now it's working just fine. I still have not printed out any uh, post office labels. This is a sample label that he had on his site. So um, there you go. Hopefully that will fix it for everybody. Again, just 203 DPI set it to, and it should be fine. Okay, have a great day. And there we go. There's my label off on my dang Chromebook. I'm so excited. This is going to save me so much time. Just right from my Chromebook. Uh, what my plan is, is to put another Chromebook up um, upstairs where my uh, shipping station is. I have two of them, so I don't have to use that Windows machine anymore to print labels out, and I'll move this printer up there. But that's the UPS uh, label. Now, the post office label, I may have to go into the settings I, I'm trying to figure out how to do that with a dummy label, but I can't figure that out. I'll just have to wait till I uh, sell something, and I'll try and do a video on that. Okay, so let's resize this label in the eBay program. It took me a little while to figure this out. Uh, this is one way to do it. I'm sure there's other ways to do it. When you're printing your label, be careful. You will miss this like I did, and I had to use my old printer to print the post office label. Now, for UPS label, it seemed to work just fine. It went right to the settings on the, the Zebra printer, and there was no problems. But for some reason, I guess I didn't reset. I've already set this up to the new label I'm going to show you. You're going to press this Show More. Remember, you got to do this when you're setting up your label. There really is no other place to do it. There used to be a preference section many, many years ago, but it's not there anymore. At least I couldn't find it. So this is one way I did it. Show more. You're going to scroll down, and you're going to say change. Obviously, it's already set to 4 by 6. That's the current label, but you could change it to uh, this was the original setting I had it on with the other, with the uh, Dymo smaller uh, label printer I had 440 I think it was called I still have it I don't know if I'm going to sell that or just keep it as a backup I'm probably just going to sell it um, so I changed it to 4 by 6 and I saved it and that saves your default from here on out so all my labels are going to come out 4 by 6 so that is it pretty easy just remember don't miss it when you're uh, your first time you're shipping us something post office. Like I said, this is one way of doing it. One more time. You're going to click show more. You're going to say change. And you're going to say to whatever setting it is. A four by six is what it was. And save. And that's it. And you can preview it if you like. There it is. There's the sample label right there. That's the way it should print out. And that's the way it will print out. So, okay, wonderful. I'm glad we figured, or I figured that out. It took me a little while. Like I said, I missed it today when I was uh, printing something, that, that same item there I sold. Um, I missed it on the um, when I sold it on eBay. I had to print it on the old printer, which was a pain in the neck, but it's okay. It's all figured out now. 
There you go, my friends. Hopefully that will work for you. That's the whole process on using the zebra printer four by sixes uh, on uh, the Chromebook and using it with eBay. I'm sure there's, there's obviously ways to do it with Amazon and Etsy and stuff, but I'm not familiar with that yet. So I will play around with the Amazon side once. I'm thinking about getting back on Amazon to do books, but I got to figure that out again, see if it's going to be worth it. All right, thanks so much. Okay, wait, I found another challenge in this printing a label out with eBay. So I left it at that setting and it printed out like this. Notice the bottom is, if I get this right, the bottom is missing. Kind of weird. It's kind of missing. It's not right. I set it to fit. That's what I did. Fill to paper. And it printed out like this. Label is a little smaller. And probably can figure that out a little bit more. But there you go. That will get you your label printed out. And it's printing out clear. The, uh, the barcode is nice and clear. So I'm not worried about the size of the barcode. Heck, this uh, the barcode was smaller than that on my uh, seven by two labels. So there you go, fit to paper. Boy, this has been one challenge after another. So hopefully that is it <laughs> for printing on eBay and using a zebra printer on a Chromebook. All right, hope this helped you out. I am so excited this worked out for me. This is going to save me a ton of time. A ton of uh, time is money because I don't have to be cutting up label a uh, printer paper or anything it's right there all right thank you so much have a great day guys hey what's up everybody it's steve with rake and craft and i'm here with paul and i just want to shoot a quick testimonial for him because he's been one of my good friends for over what four or five years yeah now? yeah and if you're looking to learn about selling on ebay and you want to start a side hustle or you just want to make some money flipping stuff on ebay you're in great hands paul's been doing this for a long time he's helped a ton of people and I put my full faith and trust in him. So, Paul, I appreciate you. You bet. Thank you so much. You got it.